Um, welcome to Layer 2 Show. Today we're talking to Elena Sinelnikova from Metis. Hello, Elena. Hi, Agne. Please introduce yourself, Elena. Um, how are you doing? How did you start in crypto? And how did the idea about Metis uh, came to fruition? Ah, thank you so much, Agne. Uh, it's, it's a long story, of course, but I will, I will try to uh, tell a short version of it. Um, uh, my name is Elena Sinalikova. I came from the software development background. Uh, for the last 20 years before I uh, actually got involved into the blockchain, I worked uh, in um, software architecture. I was the Microsoft architect and I was working for Edmonton Police and also for the for other uh, government agencies as well, uh, building the software. So everything that uh, in, in, in Edmonton in Canada they have in the police cars, this is something that uh, you know I participated in developing as well. Uh, in the back in 2014, I learned a little bit just about crypto, but uh, then um, my friends Natalia's son Italic uh, came up with Ethereum and we learned about it. We got very excited, so something that kid is doing, and uh, we um, actually uh, got interested in uh, started to install in the wallet. Like, so Natalia needed to do that, and I was helping her, found this process was not very straightforward and decided to help other women, you know, with that, with that tech, because we are two software developers. It was not straightforward for us. So we said like, oh, uh, it should have been, you know, not very straightforward for the other women, especially. So we organized the meetup uh, for women uh, here in Toronto and started doing uh, the sessions for women. We had lots of women, like 50 women joined our first one different different ages so we got really excited and it, it, over time uh this meetup grew we started doing events and we decided to formalize in crypto chicks and that's how we came um doing a huge organization now we have programs in 56 countries uh with the crypto chicks helping women learning crypto and we also had an incubator uh, crypto chicks hatchery where different ideas also was incubated so Mitis was one of these ideas. And it came from our, actually our need uh, in CryptoChix Hatchery, lots of uh, projects that are coming our way that don't have money for the developers. The developers in blockchain are very, very expensive, uh, right? So they, uh, and they, uh, you know, keep choosing, you know, Hyperledger, the tech, uh, because the um, blockchain, uh, didn't serve uh, their like all their needs, so we decided to come up with this idea and to develop the idea together with the co-founders, with Kevin and Yuan, uh, who we also met through Crypto Chicks, and now uh, we uh, uh, decided to create this. So first, it was uh, of course we were thinking of the platform to do it right on Ethereum and to onboard Web2 projects onto the Ethereum, but then we understood that it was not feasible with the fees uh, and the layer two, this is something that came into, into the picture. So we started researching. Uh, we uh, chose optimistic rollup. Uh, and also, of course, for us, it was main thing uh, to give web two companies uh, possibility to onboard fast into the blockchain. Uh, so we created this structure that would fit it all with the low code. So Web2 companies would just, with one click of the button, they could transfer their business into the blockchain. So that's how we actually formed this idea. That's how we, you know, we, we raised money with this idea. Uh, and uh, yeah, so right now we have, of course, lots of Web2 companies that are interested, but we're still building our tech for the web twos, but we have now lots of success in the web three world, in the blockchain world. We onboarded lots of partners already that are built on now layer two. Uh, so therefore now they will build the whole entire ecosystem, even before like kind of realizing our dream of onboarding web two companies. I see. Yeah. I see. That's the short story. <laughs> Couldn't right. tell it any shorter. Thank you very much for sharing. Um, I wanted to ask, so layer two, so what is the technology of layer two? You mentioned using optimistic mm -hmm. rollups. How does it differ from, uh, we know, Arbitrum, Optimism? And so what, what are the differentiators for Metis? 
Yes. Uh, so mm, we also got that. We friends with optimism uh, guys and girls uh, because we, we started working with them a couple of years ago, uh, you know, doing the same conference in Australia. And uh, so, so we, we are good friends. So they are developing a really, really great tech. So our tech is actually based on their development. So thank you very much for them. Uh, but we modernized uh, our tech to, to fit uh, still the Web2 world. Uh, and also to fit the concept of the decentralized organizations. So how we different uh, in layer two, usually in the optimistic rollup that we, uh, we selected, uh, all the transactions get submitted to one chain. They all combined and then they get committed in, in batches into uh, main layer one. And that's how it's making the transactions chip. Uh, but what we... Um, so, and like, because when we started testing, when we started building, that's the bottleneck uh, that occurs if you put all the companies and everybody in one chain and have only one sequencer that committing transactions. So the bottleneck is inevitable. So what we did, and that's what this, that, uh, that's what uh, opened the whole world of possibilities for us as well. For every new um, organization that join a layer two, we roll up the new chain. So we have this multi-chain structure. So for that as well, the companies, they have a possibility to set their own unique permissions for each chain. So therefore the different types of organizations can be uh, built on layer two, uh, can be you know, non-profits, it can be communities, volunteer organization, for profit organizations, like different, different, different structure that you can set, set the this unique uh, permissions for. Uh, and uh, that's how we have this unique value proposition. So now if you would like to build a DAO and build it on Ethereum with the low gas fees, you can do your own configuration and just do it in one click of a button as well. So what we're building right now is a different templates for different organizations that people could come build their own organization, just the click of a button, they have their own DAO. They, inside, inside of this DAO, they have a possibilities to uh, distribute rewards, to uh, get the memberships, to pay salaries, to communicate via chats, to send money to each other. So you don't need to usually all the DAO structures right now, you you know, you do the DAO structure in one and then you have messaging in Telegram or somewhere else. Then you send each other the addresses, then they get corrupted somewhere in the way or hacked or anything like that. So we wanted to avoid that. So you all have it in one place and one click of the button. So that's uh, become our very, very strong value proposition. And on top of that, for each DAO, for each, and we call it DEC, Decentralized Autonomous Company, each of the organizations, uh, we also provide the capability to, like building capability to deploy your own DAPs, also with one click of a button, because we have no code smart contract templates that we're building right now. Um, uh, we also have the uh, internal chats, as I say. Uh, so, so many, many things that you can plug in, plug out. So we use the microservices and we can all actually now start using them, um, talking to third parties to use their microservices in the DCs. So basically you come to the blockchain, you create organizations, and you can hook up a different services. So this is this is what we are building, and this is what our value proposition, and that's what we're launching as well. Very excited. That's all exciting. So DAC stands for Decentralized Autonomous Company. How does it different from uh, DAO in a, in a conceptual way? Uh, DAO is still uh, it's it's very limited. So in the DAOs that we know nowadays, it's uh, only what what they have like only voting, governance, and uh, tokens, right? So this is this is the three uh, parts that DAOs has, uh, and there is no much flexibility inside the DAO. Also, how you do it. So, so basically, you do it just only one way. For DEC, decentralized autonomous company, and that's why we call it the company, it is more flexible of what you can do. Different types of the companies, uh, different structures, uh, different, of course, it can be like you know, membership or it can be the ownership. So, so you can also distribute the different ownership uh, rules and um, the, the, you know, the stocks, the stakes uh, in the ownership. So all this, and that's why it's company. 
Very exciting. Um, a question. So it, it sort of seems to me like it's a, a con economy and a governance model all together. Uh, does it have a utility token? Uh, will we use Ethereum or Metis token for, for this? Uh, yes. Uh, so, uh, of course, because uh, we, we build our own economy, yes, we have our own utility token, which is used to pay uh, the gas fees. And even though on layer two gas fees very, very extremely low, uh, you still need to pay them. Uh, and we're building a decentralized also um, ecosystem, right? So that could work, you know, without us, without the Metis team being involved, that is our end goal. And so therefore this uh, ecosystem will be, of course, built on this uh, Metis utility token. Mm -hmm. Okay, so basically all the decentralized autonomous companies, they will, they will be using this token. That's correct. That's correct. So to 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 pay for the, the fees for the transactions. That's correct. Great. And uh, from what I'm aware, next week we already have the Metis launch. The main net is launching. Is that right? Yes. Yeah, far as I understand, by the time this uh, <laughs> show goes live. Yeah, we, we should be launched uh, in the main net. So right now we are in the public test net. So we went through like many rounds of testing. Um, yes, uh, so so this week we will launch in, in the main net. And then in the week time from that, we will open up the creation of the DECs, decentralized autonomous companies. And you can create your DEC. You can reserve the name, you can invite people into DAC and also to make it um, interesting for our audience and especially for the web tree audience we opened the program called the staking and mining for the DAC so every um, uh, you actually not only building your own companies you actually get rewarded as well so we have some budget that um, for for this uh, community exercise that is planned for one year uh, and we're going to be launching that. So okay. people are going to be staking, joining the uh, DCs, also staking, and they also there, there, there is certain APY that is built in, uh, and people will be getting rewards for that. Okay, that's great. I actually wanted to ask uh, about some programs for developers or for community to get involved. And also remember that you have launched a fund, a hundred million fund. Can you tell a little bit more about this? Yes, it's not per se a fund. It's uh, it's in the ecosystem DEC that we launched. Uh, so so uh, our investors and they were the first members of uh, this DEC to join. Uh, yes, so the uh, capital that committed right now uh, is uh, one hundred million dollars for that uh, DEC, and this funds are going to go into the development of Metis ecosystem. So any projects that join and build on layer two um, can count on the investment from that DAO uh, on the help from this DEC. Uh, and uh, so right now we are also inviting uh, you know great investors into the DEC who would like to join. So we have a person that is responsible for that. So the coordinator right now, uh, it's Natalia Amelin. So she joined our uh, project recently, a couple of months ago. Uh, and that's, that is her role right now. That's great. Amazing. Uh, how do developers uh, find you? Is it best, best way to contact uh, Metis via Discord? Um, what is the best way to get involved? Um, we are in Telegram, but for developers, Especially, we right now have a uh, hackathon that coming uh, th that is going on already for a few weeks, and we actually extend in deadline until December thirtieth this year. So it's going to be plenty of opportunities. We have five uh, five tracks, I, I believe, um, in in this hackathon. Uh, so basically, the task is very simple: you either build or port your own DAP onto Metis uh, layer two. And Metis uh, layer two is EVM equivalent. So you don't need to make any changes to your smart contracts, the existing ones, if you have ones. Uh, so, but of course, if you build new ones, it's, it's exactly, exactly the same process as you build on Ethereum and just accept the low gas fees. And uh, for that to join, it's hackathon.metis.io. So please go apply for the hackathon. So this is best, best way for the developers to join our ecosystem. And we have $1 million uh, in prizes for this hackathon. Amazing. 
what a great time to be a developer, especially if you have some skills yeah. in blockchain and ideas as well, for sure. Yes, and it, it's also a hard profession to be a developer, a blockchain developer, because our technology is, as far as, as, far as you know, probably as well, uh, develop all the time. So you need to be, you need to be learning all the time. So new things that come in out. Uh, and also, yeah, it's, it's not easy. And that's why blockchain developers are so valuable and expensive. And of course, very, very welcomed in all communities. Yes. That's great. Uh, really glad to hear all of this. Um, anything else specific that you would like to add and for our viewers to know? Uh, yes, as well. So because uh, Mitis is bu building a decentralized ecosystem, uh, so we also put in the call for the, our, so we have three three components of the decentralization. Um, and that's how we different probably from other layer twos as well, because we noticed that more and more layer twos, they go in more centralized. And we understand why. The development for the centralized systems are much easier. Uh, and then for the decentralized ones. Uh, but we put in call out for our verifier nodes uh, right now. And uh, so, so this is something that probably I will send you the link. That's, that's the best way to for the verifier nodes to apply. And it's also the staking and mining of the MITIS token will be involved for that. And we also right now developing uh, so we can have uh, also to invite the sequencers and then later on to invite the rangers as well. So these are the three parts in our decentralized validation that is uh, uh, crucial uh, for MITIS ecosystem. And we right now, yes, as far as as far as, uh, as the launch goes, we open the uh, invitation for the verifiers and uh, for the fraud proofs. And then we're going to be opening out the calls for the sequencers and the rangers. That's great. Amazing development in the ecosystem and really look forward to, for Metis to, to go live for the mainnet and to monitor what is happening. So wish you all the best uh, really and to attract more developers, gather amazing community. I will make sure that I leave the links to what you mentioned uh, below this video so people can get involved and learn more and, or contact methods as well. Awesome. So thank, thank you, you so much, much. Agnes. Thank you for having me today. Thank you very much, Elena. My pleasure.